Hello everyone, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to be talking about how to prevent recursion in Apex triggers. Okay, so let's just first understand what a recursion is. So uh, over here, I have a scenario. Uh, I have written a function account update. So let's just go ahead and see what we have in this function. In this function in account update function, I am trying to update the account description field and I'm making this dml call right update dml call so what happens is that every time this particular dml executes then as part of after update call right because once your update is done as part of after update call this particular method is called again okay and then what it does it's gonna update the description again right this will get executed and then it's gonna call your uh account update again because every time this after update will uh get executed right and it will call your account update method so it will create an infinite loop wherein this method will be called again and again okay so if you actually uh okay so this is what i wanted to show you so what i was trying to do here is now i have not like you know done anything to prevent the recursion like you know from this particular piece of code so if i go here and if i try to update anything okay let's say phone number and if i try to save you'll get the same error, right? What you were seeing earlier. So this basically shows that like, you know, my logic went into like, you know, recursion and it is now we, now we basically have to do something which using which we can prevent the recursion. That means we have to make sure that our method gets called only once. If it like, you know, in a single transaction, if it's, if it, if, if, if it has already been called once, then it should not get called again. Okay. So let's just go ahead and see how it can be done. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a class first. Okay. Um, event recursion. And over here, I will create a Boolean variable. Uh, let's say has executed. I'm giving it a default value as false. And let me save this. And I will just, now let's just go to the trigger. So every, the moment this method is getting called, right? I want to put a check before this method is called. So if, let me go ahead and copy the class name first. False, I'm putting the false check and this particular variable okay and then i will be calling this method so what it will check this condition when this condition will be uh passed and when the when your this particular line of code will be executed if this condition is passed right so initially what will happen because this is set to false then this condition will pass, right? Because here we are trying to check that if this particular Boolean is false, then enter, enter this block and execute this particular line. Otherwise don't. So at first, as this was false, it will enter this block and this particular line will be executed. This method will be called and it will make an update on the account. But let's say if I flip this variable right here, so it was false for the first time. Now I'm flipping it to true. And let's just save it. So what will happen here when this call happens for the first time, right? So this particular line of code will be expecting this value to be false, which is, which is, which is happening in our case, right? Because the default value is set to false. So this particular line, this particular condition will pass and it will enter this particular block of code. What will happen? We are calling the account update method that will be called and it will update the account. But along with this call, we are also flipping the value of this particular variable, right? We are making it true so that when the next call happens, right? When it tries to execute it again, what will happen? This condition will not false. Sorry, this condition will not pass because this condition is expecting this particular Boolean variable to be false. But previously we set it to true, right? So this will not pass and it will not enter this particular block of code. Okay, so this will make sure that your function is getting called only once. So as we have saved it, saved it let's just go ahead and see if we can save the record now, okay? 
so see we we could save it right so this is how you can uh, prevent recursion in your apex trigger okay so this was all about preventing recursion i'll see you in the next session bye bye